Greetings brothers, welcome to this week's tactics video. Today we're talking about the Iron Storm Spearhead Detachment. I've got some army lists to check out. I'm going to tell you all the different units you can use to get the most out of this detachment. I'm going to tell you about all the combos as well. And if you've been waiting to run your armor-based Blood Angels list, then let's look no further. Now is the time. So let's check out the Iron Storm Spearhead. So thank you so much for being here this week, and if you're new to the channel, then consider subscribing. I am John, the Blood Angels Commander, and every week on this channel, we're going to talk Blood Angels, we're going to talk Space Marines, we're going to talk about how you become a better 40k player. Let's talk about this detachment then, the Iron Storm Spearhead. Say that five times quickly. Anyway, once per phase, for each Adept as a starter's units in your army, you can reroll one hit, one wound, or one damage roll made for a model in that unit. So this attachment is going to benefit two types of things. Things uh, that can do basically shooting and melee, right? Because it's once per phase. And it's also going to benefit things that have like big multiple damage attacks. They're going to get much more benefit. And what I mean by this is like a land raider with four LAS cannons. We're probably going to make one miss. In this case, you could reroll one, one of those misses. You're probably going to fail a wound roll. You could reroll one wound roll. And that would be big on those big units with lots of like heavy hitting guns. But also help you for units that have like really strong melee. Now, there isn't that many Space Marine units in the new codex that have all that much strong melee. But Dreadnoughts stand out to me. Is Dreadnoughts have good shooting and good melee. Um, you get value, I guess, on from this with every unit in your army. Get some value from this. But I feel like it's most beneficial on those big units with like multiple damage weaponry. I guess what I mean by multiple damage weaponry is like a weapon that does like D6 plus one damage. One of the best units probably that could benefit this is the Repulsor Executioner. We know the Repulsor Executioner is that D6 plus four heavy cannon. I guess you're probably gonna end up, cause you only get a couple of shots with heavy cannon, you're probably gonna miss a shot or you're gonna fail the wound. So that's where the value of this is gonna come in a lot. The Brutalis obviously has a bunch of value here. Um, and also the Redemptor Dreadnought. Arguably the Firestrike Servo Turrets could actually be quite good in this if you've got them armed with LAS cannons. They do Overwatch on 4s, and obviously Overwatch would be done in your opponent's turn, which would be in a different phase. So in your opponent's phase, if you used Overwatch, you could re... Uh, the Firestrike Turrets actually Overwatch on 4s. So if you had two of them together... Overwatching on fours, that's four shots with last cannons. Rerolling one of those hits could be pretty interesting, right? And then I've basically said anything else that's got last cannons, anything else that's got big weaponry, arguably even units that have multi melters would get benefit out of this. We don't see so many multi melters anymore because obviously strength nine doesn't do so well into the current meta of plus toughness ten. But hey, I don't think it would, could be too bad. So. Like I said, Marines don't have a ton of great hard-hitting melee units with the removal of like the Dreadnoughts and the Siege Drills to Legends. Uh, but there is one unit that has basically D3 plus 3 damage left, or D3 plus 6 I think it is. It's the Librarian Dreadnought. He's literally, you know, the Redemptor Dreadnought, the Brutalist Dreadnought, they only get 3 damage per swing. The Librarian Dreadnought, I believe, can do 6 or 9 Um with his extra attack Force Lance. So arguably the Force Lance is the best weapon in the game. So having a Librarian Dreadnought is super useful as well. We've already talked about that in other videos that, that he's possibly the best character or the best model Blood Angels can have. Um, and he's the only guy that's gonna do more than three damage per swing. Uh, feel free to correct me in the comments if I am wrong. Typically when I say definitive statements like this, I end up getting something wrong, but someone will correct me in the comments. DTM or Reziel or one of the big channel <laughs> viewers, you guys can correct me. But um, Yes, so the detachment rule is pretty interesting. Uh, it used to be, and the Eldar used to have something like this, where it was like Master Crafter. They can reroll one hit, one wound, or one damage for a model in that unit. So I felt like when the Eldar had it, especially on their tanks and stuff, I felt like it was, like with the Bright Lances and stuff, I felt like it was pretty good. Um, and I think, like, if you imagine a Gladiator Lancer, for example, a Gladiator Lancer gets to reroll one hit one wound or one damage anyway, and you get two shots with that main cannon. Imagine if both miss, 
Well, if both myths in this situation, you re-roll one from the Gladiator Lancer's baked in thing, and you re-roll one from the Armour of Wrath. So suddenly two misses becomes two hits. So even on units that you might think would not get a ton of value out of it, I think I actually do get a bit of value. Right, let's look at their enhancements. And my god, some of their enhancements are insanity. They're so strong. Uh, target Auguratory Web. I'm probably saying that wrong, but it's an aura for a tech marine. While a friendly, a stepped as a starter's vehicle is within six inches of the bearer, weapons equipped with this vehicle have lethal hits. So that means auto wounds on sixes for any vehicle within six inches of the tech marine. Now, the tech marine can be hidden and he's lone operative if he's in 12 inches of a vehicle. Oh, sorry, if he's within if he's within three inches of the vehicle, I think he's lone operative. Uh, so the, the opponents can't shoot them unless they're in 12 inches. That, that's the rule. So basically, what you have a tech marine, probably he can be surrounded by about three vehicles. Three vehicles within six. It's not wholly within six. It's just within six. So he could be are adding lethal hits to many, many units. Uh, and lethal hits, I mean, they're good anyway. But this, the fact that this is an aura, like when I first read it, I was thinking like this will be like one vehicle. He gives one vehicle lethal hits. And I was thinking, man, that's pretty strong. No, this is an aura. He could be given three vehicles lethal hits. He could even be given four lethal vehicles lethal hits. Good position on this Tet Marine is going to be top tier play. Uh, we've got the, the Flesh is Weak. That reminded me of Doom there, Thy Flesh is Weak. I think that was a difficulty in the original Doom game. Uh, you can give uh, you can give an Adept as a Stars model a 4-up Feel No Pain. I guess it's cool if you need something to be survivable. I can't really see what you would need to put the 4-up Feel No Pain on. Someone in the comments again will tell me what would be good for the 4-up Feel No Pain. I don't see it. I think this is probably their weakest enhancement. The next up, Adept of the Omnissiah. Again, it's a Tech Marine only. Uh, once per battle round when a saving throw is failed for an Adept as a Starter's model vehicle within six, you can change the damage characteristic of that attack to zero. So when you get hit by the nastiest thing in the game and a saving throw is failed, then you can change the damage characteristic to zero. That's going to be big on... I was going to say, any of your big vehicles that are going to be targeted by big heavy weaponry, uh, the second you fail the save, you just say, nope, I'm not taking the damage. It's zero damage. I don't think it would work with Devastating Wounds, because technically on Devastating Wounds, the saving throw is not failed. You're just not allowed to make a save. But against, you know, I played Death Guard a few weeks ago, and the, even Death Guard now are running like multiple Predator Annihilators with last cannons. Lots of people have started putting la like loads of last cannons into their list. So one of those times, you're inevitably going to fail a save against a last cannon. You just say, yeah, the last cannon did zero damage to me. It's the difference between a vehicle living and dying, and also it's on a Tet Marine. So arguably after you do that, the Tet Marine repairs that vehicle, said vehicle. It's pretty cool as well. I could see myself taking both the target Augur Tree Web and the Adept of the Omnissiah, but Master of the Machine War is amazing as well, and it's also an aura. So this time, it's another Adept as a Starter's model only. While a friendly Adept as a Starter's vehicle is within six, pretty much everything is just like vehicle within six, right? And that vehicle is eligible to shoot even if it fell back or advanced. So, two things you can do with this. One is, if you think about the strength of the Gladius Detachment, the strength of the Gladius Detachment is when you start the game and you're in turn one, you call Devastator Doctor and everyone can advance forward and shoot all their weaponry. Well, if you place this Tech Marine correctly, or this model correctly, it doesn't have to be a Tech Marine, sorry. And um, if you place this model correctly, every vehicle that was within six is going to be able to shoot even if they advanced. So I think this would be good on a jump pack model. The jump pack model jumps forward into cover, all your vehicles advance around them, Cool, they can all shoot, no problem. And also later in the game, when the opponent gets some of your vehicles into melee combat, which will inevitably happen because they'll want to kill your vehicles, wrap them in melee combat, make it difficult for them. You just jump this character over next to them, the character could advance. So arguably, if it's a jump unit, he's moving somewhere between like 13 and, uh, 13 and 18 inches, I guess. And then it's within six. So essentially, even with a one on your advance roll, this is 19 to like 25 inches. So if your guy's pretty central in the map, 19 to 25 inches is going to get him within range of a lot of vehicles. And bear in mind, it says while a, ver uh, 
While a friendly vehicle is within six of the barrier, that vehicle is eligible to shoot even if it fell back or advanced. So he could move 19 or 25, the vehicle could fall back six to 10 inches towards him, and then guess what? He's within six, so the vehicle can shoot. So this basically means you could potentially have fallback on your vehicles just about anywhere on the map if you put this on a jump character, which I guess is one of the reasons you could say this is a good detachment for Blood Angels, because we can run two tech marines, we take target auguratory web because it's literally insane. And then Adept of the Omnissiah is also crazy good. I don't know if that's auto take as much as the auguratory web, but it is good. Uh, but I think Master of the War Machine is auto take because I think it's just crazy clutch. Uh, I would put it on a jump pack captain uh, or I was going to say, I don't, I guess you could put it on a chaplain, but yeah, probably a captain somewhere. Uh, maybe a, a captain with the five of those new jump intercessors. I mean, it might be useful just for like claiming some objectives and also if these guys can just pop around, get your vehicles able to shoot and fall back and stuff like that. Uh, I think it's really strong. I Two of these attachments for me are just so insanely good and the depth of this Omnissiah is not far behind. So three really good attachment or enhancements, sorry. I think I said attachments, enhancements. You know what I'm talking about. Let's talk about stratagems, and the stratagems here are insane as well, at least I feel like they're insane. I need to actually play this attachment, and now that I've actually started breaking it down and making these slides, I really think I do want to play this attachment. Um, we have Unbowed Conviction, so you select one Adept as a start unit from your army that is below starting strength, and at the end of the turn you can ignore any or all modifiers to its characteristics and or to any roll or test made for it. And I guess this idea would almost be like, if you remember Iron Hand's last edition, they used to have a thing where their vehicles counted as like double wounds. So this is kind of like saying, when your vehicle is on low strength, because really only vehicles got effect, get affected by having less than starting strength. You know, like if a unit has less than starting strength, then those guys are dead, they just don't fight anyway. But I guess like your vehicle has one wound left, for example, you pay one CP and it can ignore all the modifiers to its characteristics. So it can still shoot on BS3. Um, and I guess this would also count for something that was quite good, like a Vindicator, right? Because quite often people want to get Vindicators into combat. Um, I think Vindicator tanks are brilliant actually when they get put in combat because they're allowed to shoot into combat because they're siege shield. But basically you could you could get my one wound, you could jump in, do all your melee to my Vindicator tank. It's on one wound left, so it would be minus one to hit. It'd also be shooting into melee, so it'd be another minus one to hit. So I would just pay one CP and be able to shoot you in melee with no penalty here. Unbound Conviction. I think it's pretty good. Probably be good on any dreadnoughts that get tied up in combat as well. Assuming they don't have blast weaponry. Uh, you know, if the enemy got like a... Something like that. Uh, I think it's situational, but it's a pretty good stratagem. Uh, Armour of Contempt, we all know what that does. It worsens the AP of incoming fire by one. If you're going to be running a lot of heavy armour, Armour of Contempt gets used in all the Space Marine detachments. It's, it's, it's a really good stratagem. Uh, Space Marines don't have a ton of invulnerable saves, so Armour of Contempt is always useful. Well, um, I'm sure I've done other videos talking about Armour of Contempt. Mercy's Weakness is... I guess it's the one of the big kickers here. So it combos with the target web that we just talked about. So, one Adept as a start is unit from your army that has not been selected to shoot or fight. Until the end of the phase, each time a model and unit makes an attack that targets a unit that is below its starting strength, that attack has sustained hits one. And when making such attack, if the attacking model is a vehicle or an un sorry, if it's a vehicle, a successful unmodified hit roll of five plus scores critical hits. So you have to target an enemy that is below starting strength. So that's the kicker. So, but once you've targeted something that's below target strength, remember before you could always get lethal hits on a bunch of your vehicles. Now you have lethal hits as sustained ones and you have crits on fives. So that means on a roll of a five up, you are doing an auto wound. Well, you're doing a hit that becomes an auto wound, but you're also bursting an additional hit. So this will work on a unit that has a ton of firepower and again this is going to be something like a Redemptor Dreadnought or even I think the Repulsor Executioner is one of the inter most interesting targets potentially for this um, but even a regular Repulsor might be okay. Anything that has like weight of fire here uh, and so you target that enemy unit that's below starting strength and every single five up is an auto wound and an additional burst including all your hits on top of that and um, remember, 
you still get to re-roll a hit here for free. So probably one of your hits that isn't a 5-up, you would just re-roll it. Or one of you, you you're probably going to miss. Because getting that 5-up is going to give you that auto wound and the extra hit. Uh, I think this Mercy's weakness is really, really good. It's important to know it's a battle tactic stratagem. So if you were going to pay 1 CP to play this on your tank, if you were running that squad of like the Gravis Captain plus in sorry Gravis Captain plus aggressors plus the biologists so the biologist gives them the lethal hits the captain gives them the free stratagem then you potentially can still have you know like uh, the, what was it called in the gladius detachment it's called the fire storm or the fire discipline it used to be called boltware discipline this basically is almost like the poor man's boltware discipline right because Yes, you can only target something that is below starting strength, but that's up to you. So you target the thing that's below starting strength, your tank can get lethal hits and sustained hits. And then your squad of aggressors could also get lethal hits and sustained hits. Um, and because you're Blood Angels, you could even teleport that unit with the Librarian Dreadnought to get your lethal hits and sustained hits. So once the once the opponent is below starting strength, you could just pepper them down with death by a thousand cuts. I mean, you could even oath the moment them at, on top of that if you wanted to put even more damage into them, but you probably wouldn't you probably wouldn't need to. You'd probably be able to use your oath the moment elsewhere. So stacking Mercy's weakness with that tech marine's ability is pretty insane. And like using it in conjunction with aggressors is also pretty insane. This seems really strong. This seems like this could definitely be used um, this is possibly one of the most exciting things about this attachment. I just think it gives you a ton, an absolute ton of damage. And if you're using it on a unit that has a ton of firepower, then you're just going to get so much value from it. Um, let's see what else we've got. We've got Vengeful Animus, which basically means one, once your vehicle is destroyed, this is the, this is the auto-exploding strat of old. You can play one ZP on your vehicle when it's destroyed. You don't roll the D6. It just explodes and it does immortals in the aura around it. So I guess if you've got something big and nasty, um, then potentially you could actually do a lot of mortals here, uh, to, depending on what dies, where. Do you know, I haven't actually looked um, at the Astraeus' profile. I wonder how many mortal wounds an Astraeus does. You know, it's not often I recommend taking an Astraeus, but an Astraeus in this case is actually pretty interesting. Deadly Demise D6 plus 2. So everything within 6 inches would take 3 to 8 mortal wounds when this explodes. You would literally just throw your Astraeus right up the middle of the battlefield, and you could almost pick when it's going to die because you could use that Tech Marine to convert some incoming damage to 0 wounds. And, I mean, I guess the, the Astraeus has a lot of firepower, so it's going to get a lot of bonus from the lethal hits and stuff like that as well. Um, it's been a while since I ran an Astraeus to, to a tournament, but very, very interesting. What did I say? Three to eight mortal wounds for everything within six. You know how big a base the Astraeus is? You just plow that into the middle of the enemy and be like, blow me up. And in one CP, I could... I was going to say, you could probably catch, like... 10 different units. So even if you roll the one on all of them, you're probably able to do 30 mortal wounds with the Vengeful Animus. That probably needs an FAQ to cap the number of mortal wounds. But hey, in the, in old editions or last editions, Titans exploding could do an absolute boatload of mortal wounds. So it can happen. Okay, Ancient Fury. And this is a strat that I like a lot. Ancient Fury reminds me of how Iron Hands used to buff Dreadnoughts in previous editions. It's now what to be used on a walker model, that's the caveat. And until your next command phase, you improve the model's toughness, movement, save, leadership, and OC by one. And each time the model makes an attack, you add one to the hit roll. So you take one of your dreadnoughts, you basically say it's going to hit on twos rather than threes. It's going to move nine, it's going to go up to toughness 11. I'm talking about like a Redemptor or a Brutalis. I don't I don't really feel the chicken walkers myself anymore, uh, the old original dreadnoughts. Um, I'm talking about the Redemptor chassis style dreadnoughts. So they're going to be movement 9, toughness 11, they're going to have a 1 up save, they're going to have OC 5, they're going to have leadership 5 up, and they're going to be hitting on 2s, both in melee and ranged. It lasts the whole turn, it's really powerful. The only thing you're going to have to worry about is you need CP for all the other stratagems that we just looked at. Ancient Fury looks kind of awesome as well. 
And then finally, we got Power of the Machine Spirit. When your opponent's shooting phase just after an enemy unit has resolved its attack, one vehicle from your army that was reduced to below half strength as a result of those attacks. Your unit can now shoot as if it were in your shooting phase, but must target only the enemy unit when doing so. It can only do so if that enemy unit is a valid tactic. So at some point, the second your opponent hits, like your Repulsor Executioner, for example, you're instantly going to shoot back. Um, you're going to shoot back at what shot you. You're going to have your one re-roll per phase from your detachment ability. Um, and ideally you want to use this, I guess, before you get bracketed. Because if you can use this before you get bracketed, um, then you're not going to suffer the minus one to hit. Now, bear in mind, if you're near your Tet Marine, you can still have all your lethal hits nonsense. If it was your Dreadnought that had Ancient Fury, then you're going to be hitting on twos. Um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to like about this attachment. It is actually kind of insane. So yeah, every strat that they have here seems really strong just about. Um, I actually, yeah, I don't think there's a bad strat. Uh, they all make sense. They all complement the armor that you would be running or the, the armor type list that you'd be running here. So here's some thoughts that I'm going to give you and then we're going to look at two different army lists that people have already started making, one of which did pretty well in a tournament. So uh, what's good or what's going to be my thoughts on the Iron Storm Spearhead Detachment? We've got Librarian Dreadnought. Rerolls for his Focus Witchfire is going to be pretty nice. That is a deadly, deadly attack but it only gets one shot and it hits on a three up. Bear in mind, um, it's got a shorter range but it is a deadly attack and also like I said, if the unit can do both shooting and melee, it's going to be even better. Librarian Dreadnought does both. Repulsor Executioners, Gladiator Lancers, they're going to get a lot of value out of this as well. Their big cannons are more reliable. That's always a good thing. Land Raiders with Las Cannons, Predator Annihilators, Ballistus Dreadnoughts. I was going to say, they all get more value out of this. Um, more hits, more wounds, more damage potentially. Redemptor Dreadnoughts and Brutalis Dreadnoughts, I think they might be standout in this because being able to focus those different walkers, make them stronger, and also um, just baked in reliability for both melee and ranged, it's really nice. Mephisto gets better, could be a little bit of a stretch, but I guess a Psychic would get better because you could possibly reroll hits or wounds and his sword would get better, rerolling some hits and wounds. Um, but surprisingly, or unsurprisingly, Tech Marines actually get a lot better because Tech Marines have that anti vehicle pistol, while it's anti vehicle like two up. So I guess the Tech Marine's always going to be able to do chip damage to enemy vehicles. And his servo arm is a three damage weapon, so you can be able to reroll a hit or a wound roll for his servo arm. Uh, again, it's just a little bonus, I guess. Synergizes with Tech Marines makes sense. Uh, realistically, if you wanted to run your armor heavy list, this really does look like a great option. Uh, there's only a few weaknesses, but I feel like with the amazing stratagems and enhancements that they have, you're going to be able to do some crazy combos. I think this is going to be a very deadly type list. I think if you have a lot of armor, and Blood Angels players type quite in the past did have a lot of dreadnoughts. Blood Angels are the factions that had the most dreadnoughts thematically or within the lower. So, um, yeah, I think if if you've been running some armor in Gladius, because I was definitely running some armor, I think this list with some synergies could actually be really, really scary. And I think some of the things that Blood Angels can do, like the maneuverability from the library and dreadnought, maybe on like the squad of aggressors or something, uh, is actually going to combo up with some of these vehicle units really, really interestingly. Um, so let's check out a couple of lists because we've had two submitted to me uh, and I wanted to do them. So thanks so much to the guys that submitted. One of them was from Mercenary Q and the other one was actually pulled off BCP. So this is Mercenary Q's list first. He has Lamartes. And he's got a 10-man death company. All Infernal Pistols and Power Fists. We know that's kind of standard. we got a Lieutenant with a combi weapon. I guess that gives us reroll ones in a certain place of the map. And then we've got two Tet Marines with the two different Tet Marine buffs. We've got the Ballistas. we got Eliminator Squads. I guess Eliminators will get a bit more powerful because they can reroll one hit or wound, etc. We've got a Gladiator Reaper. we got three Redemptor Dreadnoughts, which I'm actually really interested to try because Redemptor Dreadnoughts... Um, they fell away because they were like 225 points, but I guess they're down like 
what's that, 12.5% or something. We got two scout squads and we got two whirlwinds. Obviously whirlwinds also getting, everything that shoots is getting more reliability out of this list. So this one's interesting. This is not maybe quite what I would come up with. And I think I'll probably come up with an Iron Storm spearhead list in the next few weeks. I think it's, I think it's something that um, sounds like it could be pretty fun. And I suppose that's one advantage that we have at the moment. Yes, people are upset that the Blood Angels attachment isn't the greatest. But what we can do is we can mix and match our Blood Angels units into these other detachments. And I think that will at least keep things fresh and it will give us options and it will make uh, the future less negative. Because last edition, if you were stuck with a bad detachment, like Imperial Fists had a bad detachment. Sorry, could you say that again? Thanks, Siri. Uh, Imperial Fists had a bad detachment last edition and they get stuck with it they had the lowest win rate for the entire season or then for three years i think they had the lowest win rate and it was generally really really bad so this gives us a lot of flexibility now let's look at the iron storm spearhead list that actually went to a tournament and i think it went five and one is what bcp was telling me again we've got the combi weapon lieutenant who has the master of the war machine aura I don't know if the, these players had figured out how good that aura could be on a jump unit, but regardless, I, I, I said that aura was almost an auto-take. We've got the two Tech Marines with their two abilities. Again, they're almost auto-takes. Definitely the web one is the auto-take. We've got three Ball Predators, all with Flamers. We've got three Death Company Dreadnoughts with Flamers and Fists. Death Company Dreadnoughts actually get a little bit wasted. I guess because they get full rerolls to hits anyway and they get full rerolls to wounds anyway because they're they're both twin linked so they lose a little bit in their melee in this detachment um but i mean i guess the walker ability might make them quite good make them faster give them more toughness uh give them better chance to hit so you could get some value out of it that way um you know, the walker ability will make, uh, sorry, the their detachment ability will make their melty gun better you've got gladiator lancer you've got two Gladiator Reapers, you got two Predator Annihilators, and then you got Whirlwind. So this list went five and one, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve armor units and three characters. That's insanity. Even when I ran a list that everyone was making fun of and calling the parking garage, I did not have twelve armor units. That is actually a little bit of insanity right there. I'll put a link to the BCP event where this went 5-in-1 down below and I'll continue to look at all the different detachments in the Space Marine Codex and I, I'm i going to be building some lists for these guys as well. Uh, this is actually quite a lot of fun. It just changes things up, it gives you some options and also no one's going to know how to play against these because they're brand new. Hey, if you guys have got to the end of the video and you like what I do on the channel, please consider liking and subscribing. I do actually really appreciate it. And if you want to support the channel, you can either do that by clicking the big join button underneath this video here on YouTube, or you can support me over on Patreon for as little as like the price of a cup of coffee a month. It really helps me do what I like to do here. And um, thank you so much to everybody that supported in the past. And even if you can't support, even just watching and liking i do really appreciate it well that definitely seemed like a fun detachment and the one thing i keep coming back to when i look at these new detachments is i do actually genuinely like it, how much effort it feels like has been put in to make these detachments cohesive and work together and have synergies and i'm really hoping when we get to like the blood angels codex down the line we'll be able to say the same positive things about the detachments but for now we have the Space Marine detachments. Hey, leave me a comment down below. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I'll be live probably this weekend, just building some jump intercessors, hanging out, prepping for my next GT. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a great weekend, and I'm sure I'll catch you very, very soon. By the blood, are we made strong, brothers? Peace.